Hi everyone, this video um, serves as an introduction to the topic of mechanical vibrations and also includes an example of free undamped motion. Uh, this is a topic in section 5.4 in our textbook. Here we go. So linear differential equations frequently appear as mathematical models of mechanical systems and electrical circuits. Here is an example um, of the type of system we're going to be working with. So, for example, suppose that we have a mass M, which is attached to both a spring that exerts on our mass a force that we'll denote by F sub S, and a dash pod or a shock absorber that exerts a force we'll call F sub R on our mass. So we're going to assume that the restoring force, this F sub S force of the spring, is proportional to the displacement X of the mass from its equilibrium position, and that it acts in the opposite, and that it acts opposite to the direction of displacement. So what that tells us then is that we can write this force of the spring, F sub S, as some negative K times X where K is a positive constant. So because it acts again in opposite direction of the displacement, that tells us that our force will be negative if X is positive, meaning if the spring is stretched, and that our force will be positive if X is negative, meaning that the spring is compressed. We further assume that the dash pot force that we're denoting by F sub R is proportional to the velocity of the mass, and that it also acts opposite to the direction of motion. So then we can write F sub R as minus C times V, or minus C times X prime, where C is a positive constant. And again, this force will be negative if V is positive, and that would mean that we're having, that our mass is moving to the right. And this force of the dash pot will be positive if V is negative, meaning if our mass is moving to the left. Now, if both of these forces, if these are the only two forces acting on the mass, and its resulting acceleration is the derivative of our velocity, of course, then Newton's law, force equals mass times acceleration, tells us that our mass times our acceleration, our mass times the second derivative, is the sum of these two forces. Recall that the force of the spring was minus kx, and the force of the dash pot was minus cx prime. So we can simply rearrange this equation to give us a second order linear differential equation, mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals zero. So we have a differential equation satisfied by the position function x of t of the mass m, and this homogeneous second order linear equation governs what we call the free vibrations of the mass. If in addition to these two forces, the force of the spring and the force of the dash pot, if the mass is also acted on by an external force, capital F of t, then our equation changes uh, slightly just to include this external force. And this non-homogeneous second order linear equation governs the forced vibrations of the mass under the influence of the external force. And we'll say more about this at the very end of the second video uh, when we touch briefly on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Now, in our differential equation, the K that we see here is called the spring constant. C is called the damping constant. If there is no dash pot, then we would set C equal to zero and say that the motion is undamped. If C is positive, then this is called damped motion. A couple of quick words before we leave here. Remember that that M that appears in our differential equation, that's the mass. And this spring constant K is the force divided by the displacement. So we'll be looking for things in our problem with units, something like, uh, you know, newtons uh, divided by the mass.
Okay, so we want to start with an example of a free undamped motion. Now notice the fact that it's free it just means that we're going to be working with a homogeneous differential equation. And the fact that it is undamped means that we have no dash pot and therefore that C in our formula will be zero. So suppose we have a body with a mass of three kilograms and it's attached to the end of a spring that is stretched 20 centimeters by a force of 15 newtons. It is set in motion with an initial position of zero and initial velocity of negative 10 meters per second. Now note that the initial condition indicates that the body is moving to the left at time zero. We want to find the position function of this body, as well as the amplitude, frequency, and period of oscillation. Okay, so first let's think about the spring constant. So recall for our spring constant, we're looking about force divided by displacement, right? So where you got a force of 15 newtons, we're told that our spring has been stretched 20 centimeters. So our spring constant K will be 15 divided by 20 centimeters. So our velocity is given in terms of meters per second. So to get our units correct, uh, we're going to rewrite that spring constant as 15 newtons divided by 0.2 meters or 75 newtons per meter. Now recall that our basic differential equation uh, is going to look like mx double prime plus kx equals zero. And since we have a mass of three kilograms, uh, our differential equation will become 3x double prime plus 75x equals zero. All right, so let's solve this differential equation. Um, we also knew, by the way, our, we had an initial position of zero and initial velocity of negative 10. So I've included that here, uh, turning this into an initial value problem. So to solve our differential equation, we start by writing down the characteristic equation. So it'll be 3R double prime plus 75 equals 0. Um, so R is positive or negative 5I. And our general solution then will be a constant A times the cosine of 5T plus a constant B times the sine of 5T. Before we apply our initial conditions, it'll be helpful um, to have a formula for that derivative. So x prime note is minus 5a sine of 5t plus 5b cosine of 5t. Great. Now we apply our initial conditions. Um, the fact that x of 0 is 0 tells us that a is 0. And the fact that x prime of 0 is negative 10 tells us that negative 10 is 5b. So a is 0 and b is negative 2. And hence our position function x of t is negative 2 sine of 5t. So let's analyze this solution. Um, again, here's our differential equation, and here's the answer for our position function. So in order to find the amplitude, the amplitude c is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. Since a was 0 and b was negative 2, we see that our amplitude here is 2 meters. The frequency omega naught is the square root of k divided by m. So in this case, the square root of 75 divided by 3 or 5 radians per second. And finally, the period t is 2 pi divided by the frequency. So in this example, 2 pi divided by 5 seconds. All right, so that's all for our introduction and um, initial example of free undamped motion. Um, the next video will get more into the notion of damped motion. Thanks so much. Bye.